the Warriors have their biggest game of the season tonight <laughs> against their toughest opponent. I, I don't know if they're going to win this, dude. Northern California on the line. Oh, my God. I mean, this could make or break the entire season. We're going to discuss that and so much more. <laughs> Serious stuff, folks. This is Locked on Warriors. <laughs> On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. I didn't do this read yesterday. I should do this today. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Check out PrizePicks.com and use promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks. Is daily fantasy made easy? How are you doing this morning, brother? It's another beautiful day, I guess. Yeah. We're... No, it's a great day to be in the Bay, that's for sure. Uh, Northern California rivalry tonight at Chase Center. Listen, uh, things could get worse. I, I, I did, I did a little bit further exploration after our conversation yesterday, though, uh-huh. uh, where I just absolutely bashed the Western Conference. Yeah, and um, you know, <laughs> a bit of a mea culpa here. Uh, it was actually worse than I initially let on. Oh, uh, it's worse. Okay. <laughs> the Western worse. Conference has three good teams and everyone else sucks, and I'm going to stand by that until proven otherwise. So the three good teams I'm going to assume are the Warriors, the Suns, and who and are you putting in the, gri- no, the Grizzlies, uh, I'm yeah, guessing. The Grizzlies. Yeah, it's the Grizzlies. And the Grizzlies, listen, I have been saying for weeks that the Grizzlies are one of like the legit championship contenders in the NBA. Uh, maybe they're the last team in. Maybe the Bulls are the last team in. But I view the Nets, who, oh, that's a shaky situation. <laughs> yes. Um, the Bucks, no question in my mind. Yeah. And then maybe the Bulls as well, if we're kind of loosening the parameters a smidge. What and about the Heat? I, I don't see it. Uh, wow. I am, I, great regular season team. I have some real questions about them come playoff time. Uh, uh, who, who are they going to give the ball to to score? Like Jimmy they, Butler cool i mean listen you don't like that i mean they made the finals with that team two years ago i know the eastern conference was much weaker then but i I like jimmy butler and i I think i like jimmy butler too i i love jimmy butler don't get me wrong uh and i think kyle lowry's a great player i tyler hero (sighs) i mean look man the guy covering this team broke the tom brady story how could they not make the nba finals how's that going for him by the way (laughs) I don't know. You tell me. I haven't followed any, that at any, all. Any any change in the last uh, eighteen hours or so? Is Tom? You Brady tell me. A Patriot? No. I have not been following the Tom Brady news. Not so. a damn thing has happened. <laughs> We're talking about Wes Goldberg, by the way, who who broke the story. That... I feel like I'm bashing on Wes. Like Wes is a good friend. Like <laughs> yes, I, I, I feel bad about it, but like Wes, <laughs> TikTok baby. Well, he still might be the the person who broke the story, but uh, you're right. Until it happens, you're saying stand by, right? Is that kind of your your stance on this? Like, until Brady signs that one-day contract, you're skeptical. Let me put it to you this way. Adam Schefter got the one-two from Tom Brady. Uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> and he's not reporting that. I don't, I don't know. That's interesting. But anyway, so uh, the one the, – so, so, and the reason why I – th- I, th- I do think yeah. the Miami Heat are a contender. I, okay. I actually think the Heat and the Bucks are one t- – or the Bucks and the Heat in that order are one-two. Fair Simply enough. because Spolstra, I love him as a coach. I think yeah. Tyler Hero has taken a step this year in the positive direction. Um, I, I certainly think they're better than the Nets. Uh, your Bulls might be in that discussion yeah. as well. But I hope the Warriors I, win I'm the not, Bulls. I'm not quote uh, – no, sorry for the pun here. I'm not bullish on the Bulls in a lot of ways. And, and it's the same reasons, by the way, that like I'm not terribly bullish on Miami. Just – I. I I guess DeMar DeRozan's a better option late in a game than than Jimmy Butler. If the Heat can hold teams under 100 points, they're going to win every game. But it feels all a little bit too defensive-y. I kind of have the same questions about them as I do uh, with the Jazz, with, like, are you really – it's a totally different sport come playoff time. I'm not – It is. uh, I'm not too concerned about a team that doesn't have a go-to, bona fide, number one scorer – uh, on their team, and that includes the Utah Jazz. <laughs> uh, and by the way, you mentioned the uh, the Memphis Grizzlies. I want to share uh-huh. this graphic real quick with you because yesterday was Groundhog's Day, and it was unique in that we're in 2022. So you numbers geeks out there, you were probably going off on the fact that it was two 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 two, and also two 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 zero two two. This is insane. This because is uh, on on that day, well, first of all, at best. Well, first of all, clutch points is not the the exactly the bastion of journalistic integrity, but. 
two two assists, two steals, two blocks, two fouls, two turnovers, twenty two point two percent field goal percentage for Desmond Bain on February second. So that's just wanted to show that graphic to you. Cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, Desmond exactly. Bain's a good player, by the way. I he think is. That man. We're sleeping on him as a, a possible superstar down the line. Like him and. Desmond Bain and John Morant in like three or four years might be a very, very real thing. Uh, and I love the lack of you-know-whats that, that Memphis gives. I mean, they, they – don't forget, not that long ago, they were talking mad smack on Andre Iguodala when Andre Iguodala was technically on their team. Yeah. And they just – they don't give a – at all. It's grind and city. They, that they embody the mantra. Yeah, they love do. Those are they my still hate teams. Iggy. They still hate Iggy, by the way. Like Josh still no, brings not it as up. much as not as much as Andre hates being called Iggy, but they still do hate Iggy. <laughs> Does he hate that? Is that why he blocked? Oh, anything? he despises it. Despises <laughs> it. That's bl- probably I, why I, you're blocked. I felt better about it. There, our buddy Connor Laterno uh, told me he got blocked too, so that made me feel so much better because it made me start to think maybe Iggy's just a little oversensitive. Um, yeah, but I. I saw uh, Stephen A. Smith, by the way, uh, speaking of, you know, we were talking before we started the show about national media coverage and, you know, you know like just, you know, checking the pulse of the nation. Uh, Stephen A. had his top five list for MVP. He did not even include Stephen Curry in it. Uh, yeah. I forgot who he was, was with him. Dude, I mean, like, do you, uh, l- l- let's let's talk about this for a second. Where do you think okay. Steph ranks in the MVP ladder right now? Like, do, is he worthy of consideration, at least to you? Like, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think he's worthy of consideration. I think that that consideration would be pretty short-lived at the moment. I mean, it, let's not forget a couple of things with MVP. One, it's a narrative-based award. And two, it it's a narrative-based award. And three, it's yes. a narrative-based award. What has Steph Curry done lately to make an argument that he's the MVP? Now, there, there are still 30 games left in the season, so there's plenty of time to change that narrative. But right now, the narrative is pretty clear. Steph Curry's not the MVP of the National Basketball Association. And... I would vote for John Morant over him if wow. the season were to end tomorrow. Based on what? Uh, he's been better throughout the entire course of the season than. How do you Steph what Curry on what measurable though? They they score the same amount of points. Uh, John uh-huh. might have a little more assists. Steph is with them with uh, uh, rebounds. Their Warriors record oh, is better. Yeah, very, it's very important that the rebounds are there. It, it's a narrative based award, expectations versus reality. And well, I'm going to push done... the narrative then. I'm going to push the narrative for Steph because a year ago, the Warriors lost the play in game to okay. the Grizzlies, by the way. Okay. And yeah. since then, uh, they added a four whopping veteran minimum contracts who mm-hmm. turned out great, but no one expected mm-hmm. that. John Hollinger, for example, who I called out the other day, picked the Warriors to finish ninth in the Western Conference. I know that's not saying much as John Hollinger, yeah. but still, uh, a lot of other people were on that boat, and here the Warriors are adding nobody of significance during the offseason except four veterans on minimum contracts and two rookies. And, and Clay Thompson did not play at all until three weeks ago. He's still not himself yet. Draymond's been out like over a month now. Uh, and yet the Warriors have the second best record in the NBA three games back of the, of the Suns, who have won, what, 12 straight? I can't, Don't quote me on that. It's somewhere around there. And by the way, uh, Chris Paul should probably get more votes than Steph Curry at this juncture today. But Chris Paul has Devin Booker. Like, who does who has Stephen Curry had on his Dray- side? That Dray- You know, like, Dray- this is the narrative Green, I'm pushing Steve, out. Steve Kerr, Jordan Poole. I Jordan mean, Poole it, was it, someone who was revered this year, like, coming in. Like, we considered him on the same level as a Desmond Bain or, like, a... Uh, Is your your argument that the Warriors are a poverty franchise only held up by Stephen Curry? Because I based on the last two years, yes. Based on the last two months, I can make the exact opposite argument because Stephen Curry has played like a completely average player in in a lot of those games, and the Warriors keep winning. Yeah, he averaged. Look, granted, he averaged. it's It's the same argument that I would make for like Draymond Green, Defensive Player of the Year, right? Like a lot of people thought when Draymond went out the Warriors' defense would absolutely crash into the floor because Draymond's not there, which yeah. is probably an overstatement. But at the same time, like, there's some credence to that argument. Like, Draymond does so much on defense. And what's happened? Nothing. Like, it's not as good, but it's not bad. It's still a top-five defense in the NBA without Draymond Green. So does that help or hurt his candidacy for Defensive Player of the Year in your eyes? I think it helps Steph's Cur- is Steph Curry's case for MVP because he, again okay. he's the leader in the face of this team. He defensively is actually playing on the opposite. <laughs> his shooting's not great. He had a horrible January by his standards. I think most other players would still love those stats. He shot thirty eight percent from the field, thirty three percent from beyond the arc. I mean, these are not the Mendoza line. No, they're not great. They're not great. But it's from it's one month. Numbers. 
The MVP it's number, the race is and a we're asking, season long. And it's what, you know, February 3? Yes. Yeah. I th- but again, I think, I, mean, I think that this is going to be fairly fresh in people's minds. So do you think if Stephen Curry wasn't playing, where would the Warriors be without him? That's that's my argument for Stephen Curry being MVP. If Stephen Curry is not on this team, who are the are the Warriors even a playoff team? Well, I don't the, think so. No, I like well, that. Well, actually, that's not. I, I take that back. If if Stephen Curry had just missed the entire month of January, the Warriors would still be in the top six seeds. Now they'd be falling like this, but yeah. they'd still be in the top six seeds. Mm-hmm. Um, just because of what they were able to do. There's no argument that Stephen Curry was the MVP of the league for the first two and a half months of the season. But we got to be real. Like, we can't ignore the last month and a half of the season. And yeah. if even this comes up, it needs to come up significantly for him to make the argument over a guy like Jokic right now. Uh, I think Giannis. But again, we're, we're having – this is a, a totally false argument. Like, we're having an argument about who wins MVP on February 3rd Yes. When that's never in any circumstance going to be the date. Like, I, yeah, God yeah. help us if, 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 if the line is drawn again, just like in the right middle of the season, and we have to pick an MVP at the end of it. Which, by, by the way, did they even pick an MVP during the, the pandemic? I guess they did because they had the bubble. So, um, they did. Yeah. It, it's. I can't remember who it is right now. I really can't. Uh, I'm drawing a was blank. It I think it was Giannis. I think it was Giannis, yeah. <laughs> no, that's by the, yeah, way, that's... When, by the way, when in doubt, just give it to Giannis. <laughs> I, I said, "One in doubt, give it to Steph." But that's me. That's the homer in me, I guess, coming out. Uh, uh, let's pay some bills real quick here, starting with BetOnline.net. Uh, speaking of BetOnline.net, uh, you mm-hmm. looked at the Warriors' numbers for tonight's game against oh, the baby. Kings. Again, this is a make-or-break game for the whole season. Yeah. They lose this game, uh-huh. the Warriors forget about titles. Forget about what's really important is that sarcasm comes across great on visual and audio <laughs> mediums. <laughs> it does not on Twitter so much, but yes. On, no. So, so uh, Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. As football continues its march through the playoffs, right to the big game in a couple weeks. It's less than a couple weeks now. BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just football. Bet Online has up to the minute info on pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, along with live real time updates of current games don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available for the 22 season and again yep. what's the warriors line do we know what that is okay warriors 13 and a half point favorites the total in this game is 224 and a half uh you can get the king's money line at plus 650 oh i don't like 13 and a half that's huge man it's a massive number that is, dude. I don't know. I don't know about that. Maybe the over, but I don't know about taking either side on that. I don't well, know anyways, the over either. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not confident in any of that. You but hope if, Steph has a good game. <laughs> if any of you are confident about that, just go to BetOnline.net where the game starts. This show is also brought to you by no one else for now. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> this is Locked On Warriors. <laughs> On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. For making Locked On Warriors your first listen, the NBA trade deadline is a week from today, February 10th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 12 Pacific, and the Locked On NBA podcast will be covering it live from 2 to 4 p.m. Join Kim Becker, John Corrales, and Locked On Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd to get analysis of every blockbuster move. Subscribe to Locked On NBA YouTube and turn your notifications on so you know where they go live. You've, you've been mentioning, by the way, uh, and that's Dieter Kurtenbach. You can follow him on Twitter at Dieter. You can follow me on Twitter at Dog Surf Roadshow, and you can follow the program on Twitter at Locked On Dubs. You've been mentioning that the trade uh, market's been kind of cool. Don't don't expect yeah. much when the trade deadline emerges next week. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be recording shows on both Thursday and Friday uh, yeah. to recap that. But one trade uh, rumor that's been heating up lately, and, and we might as well talk about it, is yeah. Ben Simmons for Bradley Beal. And that's, mm. a, I think, a possibility. I mean, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Are you hearing anything else about this Ben Simmons fiasco in Philly? I haven't heard anything about Ben Simmons lately other than <laughs> he's not going to play. Uh, mm-hmm. he's, he's putting his all-world defense out for himself at this juncture. Uh, the Bradley <laughs> Beal situation, listen, I, I, I will not give any credence to Bradley Beal whatsoever. Mm. I think he's a great player and all, but the 
the wishy washiness, the lack of uh, aggression. I just I find that organization in general too. I don't I don't put a lot of stock in sort of the way that they're run and, and sort of the messaging that's coming from that region of the country. I just I, I it might be true. I just I, I've heard so many different stories about Bradley Beal and so many <clears throat> that you know we can't share here uh, about, <laughs> about why just, share. No, sure no, 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 that's, that's inappropriate. <laughs> no, like legitimately, like you, uh, not to say there's anything nefarious or, or scandalous or anything like that going on. It's just like this guy can't make up his mind. And one day he's this way and one day he's yeah. that way. And Washington doesn't have a, a tremendous amount of incentive uh, to, to do anything um, whatsoever because they are still they view themselves as a money making venture. I look at the standings right now. Washington is half a game uh, out of the play in tournament. Like, who cares? Like, it, 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 oh, he wants out. Yeah, he said that before, and then he didn't the next day. And then he says yeah. it before, and he didn't the next day. And it's like, dude, just if you go chasing Bradley Beal in any way, shape, or form, if you're any team, even a team like the Sixers who just needs to get an asset for an asset, uh, you're asking for trouble. This guy can't make up his mind. <laughs> would you um if you're on either side is there is there a hesitancy to pull in that trade or if you're philly or washington do you not just say if, why not not? If I'm, not if i'm philly yeah if you give me an all-star for a guy that i can't use yeah I'd, yeah I'd, I'd, I'd take that i'd take that in a heartbeat plus any it's day a guy and, that they would need yeah and i think washington why not i mean you're getting younger with simmons here's the trade that would make much sense to me and and yeah. it's it's uh, i'm laughing at the brooklyn situation because that organization is just imploding right before our eyes man uh, it's almost as if someone had written a column about that months ago <laughs> uh speaking of sarcasm so uh i i really think the nets if they had half a brain they would pull this trigger on harden for simmons yes um i actually think simmons makes sense on brooklyn but he i he does yeah, but again, the, the, I don't know what's going on with the Brooklyn Nets. Latest, Sean latest rumor is that uh, our, our, our good friend and uh, constant comp to bad Clay Thompson, Joe Harris, might not be coming back. That, that's a fun one. Oh, yeah, go Brooklyn. They are cooked. <laughs> hey, Kevin Durant, great call, really. Like, you know, you, oh, yeah. did, you definitely yeah. you chose wisely. You really did. Um, the injury report for tonight, by the way, our, our buddy uh, going to be out tweeting tonight, baby. <laughs> yeah, look, it came at me once, but it just it, it lacks substance because I was oh. literally preparing for the hive to come after me, and oh. and it didn't because it just it, he didn't really. Uh, I don't think he had his A game when he came came at me that day. Uh, and look, he KD had it for me, he always has <laughs> it. For me. He did. That was like a month after me, a month or two after me, right when we were starting always this program. Always has it for me. You, he did. Yeah, and, and I remember you mentioned like in the raw, so you weren't even seeing most of the messages. There were people. Oh yeah, I, I don't see correct? any of this. Uh, yeah, the only the only way I see people bitching about what I say on this podcast is by you replying to them. Like I just like <laughs> I'm very I'm very open. I, I tr you know I try to be this, but like there's a level of toxicity that exists in NBA fandom in particular that I just I'm not engaging with. I'm just not going to do you, it. Man. Like you want to have a, a conversation at a you know. Yeah, I say high level as if I'm operating there. But uh, if you want to, if you want to <laughs> actually engage, if you want to <laughs> actually engage. Like, yeah, let's go for it, man. Like, what the, what the hell am I doing? I'm just sharing takes. But uh, you no, know, nothing, nothing here is important or, or worth you know being angry about. And uh, true, uh, I, I find it very hilarious. These stands are out of control, and the bots are out of control, <laughs> and I just I'm I'm done with it. So. You know, at least I'll say this for Mr. Mr. Duran. At least he comes through on the DMs. Like that's you know, that's uh, yes, he does. At, at least you know, if he wants to, if he wants to clap back, okay, let's go. Let's 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 have a conversation, Kevin. You can you can clear the air. You can set the record straight. And it, it just it's so weird. He never does. No, he never does. <laughs> and honestly, he talks a lot, but he never does. And if this ever gets back to KD, I'm dropping all criticism toward you. If you just simply explain why you left the Bay Area, this 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 region embraced you for three There's years. No we showed nothing but well, of love yeah. to. He hasn't yeah. he hasn't formally ever like said it. And I know Draymond when they were on that pod together briefly brought it up. And KD's been masterful at changing the subject and not being yeah, direct about guy, answering that's that. For sure, that's no what's up. Of, he's a smart guy. He knows how to, <laughs> he knows how to pivot. Like he, I think he, he puts a great politician. 
Yeah, oh, oh, brilliant, yes. And, and uh, uh, not kidding, uh, all kidding aside, though, Harrison Barnes, I think, would make. There's a reason why they called him, what, the senator, right? Wasn't that his nickname? Yeah, that dude's senator. a smooth talker. Yeah, I could see him actually doing something like that. Um, When okay. we come back, uh, we'll give you a little more news about tonight's Warriors-Kings game. I got a yep. couple of fun clips to share with Dieter and the audience here. But first, let's talk about Rock Auto. With the oh, ever yeah. Incre- yeah, right? With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often a pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning? Like, is your Odyssey an LX or an EX? And wait. To be fair, person... you should you should know that about your Odyssey, if I'm, if I'm being real. Fair enough. I know that is fair. It's, I hear you. It's on, it's on the guide, you know? Put and it, wait while the person guy. behind the counter orders the parts oh. on their computer. They're just choosing going to rock the... auto. Just go to Rock Ahead, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to (laughs) rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? For example, a Honda Odyssey fuel pump is $353 from a chain store, whereas it's $216 from Rock Auto. So I think, yep. Dieter, what people should do is go to the chain store, bring your phone, <laughs> find what you want, then go to rockauto.com and I, just buy it. <laughs> yeah. I, let me put it to you this way. I just I just did a little bit of car work, and uh, I, I spent a bit of time on Rock Auto, and knowing what stuff actually costs, game changer. Yeah, Total I hear you, man. Changer. And, uh, yeah, you know, hey, hit, hit, hit go, you get the thing. If you bring, like, this is something that I don't think a lot of people know. You're like, oh, well, then I don't know how to install it. If you bring a part that's going to work for your car to a shop, they'll install it. Then you're only paying for labor. That's yeah. That's how you save some money. Absolutely. And Rock Auto Rock is Auto. a family business serving do-it-yourself customers for over 20 Rock years. Family. I totally, man. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box. So they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. The injury report tonight, I believe Andre Iguodala, a.k.a. Iggy, is out again. Uh, And again, Warriors fans, don't take any concern about that. This is all par for the course. They're saving him for the playoffs, right? I mean, would you agree with that? Yeah, Andre Andre is doing his uh, his real steady sabbatical. That's that's what I'm calling it. It's a regular season (laughs) sabbatical, and, uh, you know, more power to him. More power to him, indeed. We got the we got the injury report right here. Let me pull it up real fast. And I think uh, Bielitsa is out for another game. His fourth or fifth, I believe, because of yeah, back spasm. Yeah, it's a bilateral back spasm. Draymond Ooh. Green is out for a disc injury. We knew that. Of course, uh, Andre Guadala out, left hip injury management. And uh, Otto Porter is deemed questionable with a tight lower back. Oh, rest him. There's no rush to play him. Don't force Otto Porter Jr. out there. You're going to kill Kevon Looney. You're trying to kill Kavan. I know, I know. I don't want it's that. I re- it's not good. You, I'm, I'm, I'm slowly on your level of fandom with Kavan Looney, man. He has. I mean, y'all, I've always y'all loved him. Needed a big old sample size. I was able to yeah. do it with ten minutes a night, and yet now everybody's like, "Oh, Kavan Looney's great." It's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um I, but by the way have you so uh Choli changing gears here but still staying on the warriors uh ricky rubio on a random podcast or i don't know what he was doing but it was in spanish yeah. but somebody trans somebody translated it and he basically said he wants to play with clay thompson and steph curry uh and it's not gonna happen this year but no. in in a next year two years from now like i could you picture that like what are you like what is your imagination drumming up when you picture Ricky Rubio with the Splash Brothers. I mean, if my man wants to sign a minimum contract and come and be a second string, third string point guard, I mean, more power to him. Uh, totally. Like, whatever. Ricky, Ricky Rubio had a really nice year this year. He was a good player. It's a shame that he's hurt. injured. Uh, it is a shame. I, you know, who am I to begrudge Ricky Rubio his dreams? 
<laughs> and and, uh, and last but not least, and I think we can wrap it up after this. Uh, this is what happens when we have a King's show. We go like almost an hour. We're just full of stuff. It's just, it's just. I mean, I, we can't. We don't have enough. Uh, so. The Utah Jazz have a social media manager who is a character. Are you familiar with this? No, I'm not. Just, uh, uh, just uh, the, the entire phrase, Utah Jazz social media manager, just made my entire insides fall out. It, <laughs> it is fascinating. And maybe we should get a, the, the, the man who created this whole podcast network and who runs it, David Loke, on this program at some point, to talk about her name is Angie Treasure. I cannot make that name that's up. Inc- that's incredible. It, it, just by itself and yeah. she's like verified that's her right there i mean she's she's got a personality man and apparently when people if you go on twitter and criticize the utah jazz she runs a utah jazz account mm-hmm. and responds with her account saying tough s-bomb and, and she, she's snarky it's funny but she posted this video of um is it fachu Compazo? is that how you pronounce it yeah that sounds about the, right the, he's the backup point guard for the Denver Nuggets. He's my height, 5'10". Yeah, be careful uh, in how you say Compazzo's name. Uh, I'm pretty sure that certain announcers from this neck of the woods got in big trouble had to do an apology. Fair enough. Compazzo, then then so. please, my apologies in advance. No, 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 no. no. You, you, you didn't do it with a terribly offensive accent. Um, okay. So you're good. All right. I am bilingual, so I hope I can roll my R's appropriately. But uh, so here yeah. is um, here is Compazzo and the fans who stuck around after the game. I just look, you're a soccer fan and yeah. I got the vibe from this. So here's the video and uh, hopefully you enjoy. Okay, go for it, please. The NBA's regular season product is so crappy right now. It is like, it is incredible. Like, we're lucky that it's like Warriors. But like, think about think about how unexcited we are for Golden State Warriors, Sacramento Kings tonight. There was like 500 people to watch the Nets and the Kings play. It's in, in a great, like a legitimately great arena. Like, I prefer Golden One Center to Chase Center, like two to one. I haven't been and there yet. It's it's yeah, awesome. It's great location, you got to drive right? up. It, well, it, okay. at this point, we can take everybody who listens to the show and, and still get off pretty easy. Um, <laughs> it's it's like <laughs> get a party bus. Uh, actually, the bus would cost more than the tickets. But uh, <laughs> take the Greyhound to Sacramento; it would cost more than the ticket to the actual game. Uh, we need to find some way to create a legitimate atmosphere at NBA regular season games because yeah. we can also be real about this. Like most regular season, I know ninety nine percent of leagues don't have playoffs, but most like regular soccer games also suck. Like, I love soccer, don't get me wrong. Like, I watch a ton of it. I'm going to watch some this afternoon, like, all this stuff. But, like, most of it sucks. And, <laughs> you know, it's just a bunch of dudes heading the ball and, and then going down, with, you know, because they got kicked <laughs> either in the head or because they want you to think they got kicked in the head. It's not awesome. But there's an energy, there's an atmosphere at most of those games yeah. because of ultras, which, again, that is then a double-edged sword because you get the negativity of ultras and, you know, the whole, like, oh, we're going to kill people in the streets thing, which isn't what we're looking for here. All I'm saying is, how do we not have one? And I mean this, like, because ever since the Warriors went from Oracle to Chase Center, it has not been the same, as you would expect. True. Like, how do we, yeah. how is there not one legitimate, like, Oh man, we got to go play there. Their fans are crazy. Home court advantage. Yeah, Oklahoma City doesn't have it anymore. Uh, I, there's not a single team in the Northeast. Uh, not a single in the team NBA. In the, you're talking about. You're saying like who has who has home court advantage like, in the NBA today? That's a good question. That's a the, great the, question. The two teams that you could say have home court advantage in the NBA are Denver and Utah, and it's solely because you're at altitude. That's it. That's the hmm. only home court advantage. You can make the argument that the Warriors provide a little bit. Statistically speaking, it's none. I mean, the the lines don't move because of that. They don't get three and a half. They don't get, you know, there's no home court advantage outside of just the natural product of you had to travel to come to this game. And I would just, uh, if I am an NBA owner, if I'm an NBA team president, if I'm an NBA somebody who has some ability to do something and I'm running a crappy team, like I'm finding ways to get, people into that arena on the cheap and creating somewhat of like an ultra section and just trying to get like one end of the court, you know, like just behind the backboard, same way they do it in college, 
You know, like just one section is just crazy people. And well, here's my idea. I can think I that would create a better idea? atmosphere for everybody, and people would actually want to come to the games. I agree. So, and and I think that the one arena that has that impact, if the team is good, and that's the problem, is Madison Square Garden. I mean, that place has such a vibe to it. Uh, you just feel. I mean, yeah. if you're a basketball fan, you feel the the, the it's history. Just, it's just, just walking cool. through that old building. It's just a cool building. Cool. Yeah. Does something. And they get I loud there, it... though. They get rambunctious. You know, like I could see yeah. it a little bit there, but the product sucked for like 20 years. Um, it still does. Here's my idea. Besides bringing back the wave, and I'm kidding on that. That's more okay. sarcasm. Uh, <laughs> uh, and beach balls, but even more sarcasm. Um, here, balls. here's my no. Here's my true idea, and I've actually been saying this for years. The courtside seats, the primo facto seats in an NBA arena, take yeah. out all the billionaires and put uh -huh. the most diehard fans who can only afford these the nosebleed seats, put them in those seats and and make sure they're the drunks, make sure they're the crazies. And I guarantee you there will be home court advantage for every game when those crazies are screaming at players. I mean, you obviously have to have security and you obviously have to have civility, but this if you have that energy baked. <laughs> on court weird. side, you're telling me that's not going to make a difference. You when when other when opposing players are in there, and what if we? Hearing... What if hear this? Hear me out. What if we <laughs> were to take the most rambunctious, poorly behaved fans and had no barrier between them and the floor? What if that's we were to do that? That that's Absolutely. your idea. Did you see I mean, the look, guy they the other? Did, did you see the kick him out for, for life? You see the guy in San Antonio who made the, the feigned blocking attempt at Jordan Poole's three in the corner? No, I missed that, actually. Well, he he, he fit your criteria pretty good. And he's banned and for life, right? I mean, you ban him for life if they do that. Get him out of there forever. I mean, like any, the... the any, any time you're legitimately encouraging someone to do something, but if they cross the, a, a, a very unclear line, you have to ban them for life, it was a bad idea to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> like no, no no i just want you to like kind of murder them <laughs> like, i think i think there would be real home court advantage if you brought the crazies to the to the court side that's here, my here's idea. what i here's what i here's what i would do if i was the sacramento king we could do this with the yes. sacramento kings because there's nothing to lose there they had uh, the puking guy remember the puking guy court side that, that was fantastic <laughs> yes, i would have that guy there every day because he's not doing anything to anybody he can't even stand up um i would take i would take an entire section behind one of the baskets and I would say, these tickets are free if you promise to show up every day. And if you don't show up every day, you lose Ooh. your tickets. Ooh, I like that. I like that. See what you get from this program, folks. Thanks for making Locked on Warriors your first listen every day. We're back tomorrow to wrap it up for the week. Now make your second listen, Locked on Bets, your daily one-stop oh, yeah. shop for all your gambling needs. Locked on Bets, hosted by... Our boy Q our with boy. expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling is free and available whenever you get podcasts. You can follow Dieter Kurtenbach on Twitter at Dieter. You can follow me on Twitter at Dogs Surf Road Show and this program on Twitter at Locked on Dubs and watch us eat crow tomorrow when the Kings beat the Warriors. I hope that does not happen. I don't foresee that happening. 13 and a half spread. Let's hope that falls through. Uh, anything else? Are we done? We out? I'm good, man. I'm good. All right. Take it easy, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.